All right, let's talk about the, the scale, major scale systems and how they connect to the cords. You know, if you think about all the different shapes, I've been talking about having five shapes to the cords. And, and, catch, and basically what you're doing here is you're connecting the, the neck and cut, breaking it down to five positions, okay? There's a lot of ways you're going to see players move and traverse up and down the neck, but one of the things they have in common is they all know positions, and what they're doing is quickly moving from one position to the next. And to be able to do that, they've got to be able to see the different positions. Chords, it goes up, for instance, the C chord connecting up the neck through the different chord shapes. Every one of those chord shapes has a scale shape that, that goes right on top of it where you can stay right in that same position and never move. For instance, on a C chord, that, that's a, a C shape. And so that happens to be a C chord, and I'm gonna call it C shape. So when you hear me talk about C shape, I'm not really talking always about a C chord. I'm talking about a shape, a form. So in the open position, C, you've got a form that looks like this. Now I want to mention something because the way I play the, the scale there, I start on a root note, this C note, and I end on this C note. But when I'm practicing my scales, I start on that C, which is the lowest root note in that position. I take it up as high as it can go in that position. I don't, obviously I could shift to a higher note, but I'm not shifting, I'm staying in one position. And then as I come back down the neck, I, I include the notes that are below the root note and come back to the root note. And that's real important because a lot of times if you just practice a scale from a root to a root, like going, you don't see all the other notes around that position that you connect it to. Even if you went up to the highest note, That doesn't tell you that, well, gosh, I got a note here, note here, note here. Those are all still part of a C scale. And those are gonna help you down the road moving back and forth. So when you're practicing a position, we wanna practice every note in that position that's part of that scale. So that C shape looks like this again. Now for C, that's got some open strings in it. So guess what? When we start moving that up the neck, we've got to refinger this whole deal to look different. So what you have to think about is, is as if your first finger had to catch these open, these open notes. So if I want to say move that to D, it's going to look like this. There's my D. There's a D chord um, using a C shape. And I'm going to put a D major scale in that position. I'm in second position. As you're learning that position, what you want to do is take that one position, run it through the cycle of force, practice it in, in C, F, B flat, E flat, until you feel comfortable with that. Uh, one other side note in picking, when I'm practicing scales, always, I always pick, practice them using an alternating style picking. And by that, what I mean is I'm just, I'm never repeating. I'm not using an economy, what some people might call an economy style of picking. I'm using a strict down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up all the way through the scale and my, just training my hand to make the, the moves with that. For speed, that'll work out great down the road. Now, that means for every, I mentioned every position of a chord. There's a C shape. Well, C, we got an A shape position here, okay? Now, when I go to this A shape position here, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna start that scale actually on my middle finger on the fist, the fist string at the third fret. And this is gonna go right over that A shape chord. That whole position really just gives me one note higher than I could get in that first position, but it's still another uh, the next position up the neck. We had the C shape, now we went to the A shape. And what I'm using here is, is a strict concept. I'm, I'm, when you extend a finger back, you're not technically changing positions. You're standing in the same position. Some people like to shift in, when they practice scales. Right now, we're gonna to stick to just staying in a single position, and, and later we can talk about connecting them. Now, you got a C shape here, using an A shape, using the C chord. Now, say we move to the G shape. And again, there's my G shape, a C major chord, and I'm gonna run the same scale.
Okay, the D shape's gonna start on the fourth string on your, your uh, middle finger, right there where you normally play your, your D shape like that, the 10th fret. And then when you finish with the D shape, that's gonna bring you right back to where you started, an octave higher. You got the C shape again right here. done is gone from a C shape beginning at the first position all the way to now 12th position C shape you've connected the every chord position for a C chord we had a, a major chord, major scale shape and so what you want to do is take each one of those individually run through the cycle to your gnome and then connect them again all the way up and down the neck uh, one note every every scale position is going to have one position for a C um, a C shape the C's in the open position. So that's got a weird fingering because you don't you don't have op open strings except in that one position. For a G shape, it'll be a G chord. For an E, actually for an F, it'll be the E shape has some open strings in it. And then of course your D um, will have the open strings in it and the C.